Guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Bird Brain Podcast, where the goal is to rise above it all, stay elevated, create that infinity, and up your you. I'm your host, Isaiah, and first podcast of the new year. Happy New Year to all of you. And um, yeah, we are just going to, we're just going to collect ourselves, and we're going to tie our shoes, and we're going to dress properly for the weather ahead. And we're just going to talk about some things, some things that have come up for me that I think, uh, you know, hopefully you may find some benefit in, in considering and also just moving forward, like how to take care of yourself. OK, so we're going to get into that. If you're at home, grab some water. Get comfortable <laughs> or get ready. And if you're driving, put on your damn seatbelt. All right. Stay tuned. What's going on? Happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year. It's good to be here with you guys on the first first week. Let's call it the first week of the new year, 2023. It is happening. How do you feel? Right? I know there's this moment of like invigoration that that happens or uncertainty, you know, when the ball drops, right? Um, and as you get older, I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but it's so funny. I I find it harder to stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> I find it so much harder to stay awake these days to even watch the ball drop or watch the clock strike 12. I don't know the last time I watched a ball drop, but uh, to to watch the clock strike 12. Um, yeah, it was rough for me <laughs> this year. Uh, and I was like, man, I'm going to just stay up because I, I was like, you know, trying to do as much as I possibly could. I have like little rituals, you know, to, to bring in the new year. And it's just little things for me. You know, I talked about writing the letter to myself every year and I received my letter from last year. And would you know, one of the biggest things that were the, the three biggest things, um, was having a better relationship with myself. Um, my podcast ranking in, in the top mental health, uh, one of the top mental health podcasts or relationships and having people around me that I feel sure of. All those things came to pass last year. And how amazing is that? You know what I'm saying? And they were they were all in theory things that I was in control of. My, my podcast ranking top one of the top uh, in the top five percent globally like that I can't control, but what I can't control is my consistency to keep delivering on content, right? And making sure that the content is noteworthy. You get me? So that in itself is, I think, so important when it comes to like goal setting and, and, and just trying to or having aspirations for yourself. Focus on what you can control, Right. Because a lot of times when we set out to have these goals, it's like there are things that we want to achieve that aren't even in our control. And when it the thing doesn't happen, we're discouraged because it's like, well, I failed. And it's like you didn't fail. You didn't give yourself a chance at success, though, either in the best way possible to the best of your ability. You get what I'm saying? Those three things in the grand scheme were things I could control. My relationship with myself, building a better relationship with myself, I'm always in control of, right? I'm always in control of that. And I have to do some very hard work to make that happen. Heart work. <laughs> I have to work on that. That is that is really up to me to make that happen and make that truth. And I accomplished it. Was it easy? Absolutely not. Y'all, when I tell you, <laughs> and not easy in the way of like, 
it was rough for me to to value myself. No, it was it's the challenges come when things are not going your way. That's when the real challenges happen because you start to associate with the the thing that's happening versus seeing yourself as a separate entity from the occurrences, right? We can have influence over certain things happening, but overall, that's not you as the person, right? You are not that thing that's happening. And, uh, you know, I talked about you are what you attract. I don't think that's fully true because we attract a lot of things in life. We attract, everybody's attracting everybody. You get what I'm saying? We are, we, we are attracted to things sometimes out of, out of our scope of awareness um, or people are attracted to us. You, you know, they, they say all the time, oh, yeah, you know, a nice, kind person in certain areas, you are a, a walking target for predators and energy vampires and all these other things. Does that make you an energetic vampire? No. Right. But somebody is attracted to you. That doesn't make them a genuine, kind person either. It just means that there's a level of attraction there. So moving away from you are what you attract allows you to not have this complex of I keep attracting, for lack of a better word, I keep attracting narcissists or I keep attracting emotionally unavailable people. You're not necessarily a narcissist because you attract narcissism, right? You like boundaries (laughs) and people are attracted to that. You get me? Does that make you a narcissist? No, right? It means you have some things to work on and you have a level of honesty that you haven't unlocked about how you behave. Attract and emotionally unavailable people. Does that make you emotionally unavailable? To a degree, yes, because you're willing to cultivate a relationship with a person that is also abandoning your feelings. That, so it's not about what you attract, it's about what you cultivate. And that's what I I think is so important to recognize in your in your process and in your journey. We attract everything. Like it's almost as if you are, uh, you know, think about it. If you walk through a house or anywhere for that matter, and there's dust, right? Dust at some point is going to get on you. Why? Because of the fabric you're wearing, how you're walking. There is a um, there's a draft as you walk, and dust clings to you. You get me? Are you dust? Are you dust because of that? No, you might be dusty, (laughs) but you're not dust because you're attracting that, right? So I don't think that's true. And I think it's so important to remove yourself from that process if that's how you think, okay? You're a reflection of the five people you hang around. That is true. That's you, you, because if you can continue to sustain relationships, what is that saying about you? Okay. If you look at your moral compass versus someone else's and you guys don't really align, what's that saying? Right? How do you keep compromising yourself in order to sustain other relationships? In the last year, you know, one of the things I wrote in my letter was I I'm grateful to have people around me that I'm certain of. There's no envy, there's there's no uncertainty, like we're good. And how I ended last year and the people in my life that are like functional participants in my life. Yeah, very much so. I went through a full process of reevaluation, but also experiences that led to the end resolve, right? Which means that relationships did change, or maybe there was an attempt to rekindle certain relationships. And the exact same thing that ended the relationship before is exactly what ended it the second time. You get what I'm saying? So when people talk about, you know, people change and, you know, sometimes people deserve a second chance, whatever the case may be, second chances should be granted to people who, I don't want to say should, should is a dangerous word. I even tell my clients, don't say should, but If you're going to give a chance, a second chance to anyone, first of all, ask yourself why, right? That's important to unpack and understand. Secondly, ask yourself what's changed. What's changed since the last time me and this person have um, interacted with each other? What has changed? Has their dialogue changed? Have they improved upon themselves? What have they been working on? What have I been working on? Because sometimes... We get caught up in this idea of like, oh, I miss this person. This person misses me. 
So by default, that means that we should be together because we miss each other. No, that's actually not the case at all. Missing somebody just means that the dynamics of a relationship has changed. Access, uh, interaction. That's what missing someone means. It's a longing for. Uh, you know, if you don't see somebody for a while, you miss them. Why? Because I haven't seen you in a while. What does the relationship look like though? Right? I miss talking to this person. Okay, what do I miss talking? Because we haven't talked in a while. Right? But what does that relationship feel like? Sometimes we miss people <laughs> that we miss people that we shouldn't be missing in, 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 in a weird way. And what I mean by that is like if you're missing a person who has repetitively treated you poorly, then what are you missing about them? What is that? Okay. And if you continuously get frustrated by their behavior and their actions, again, this is now you. This is a you thing. This is a you thing. One of the things I appreciate most is when I, you know, I I have sessions with my clients. Shout out to to my 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 peeps, my clients who uh who listen to this podcast and you know, cuz even in sessions sometimes they'll they'll talk to me and they'll be like, "Yeah, so you know, this thing happened and something you said came to mind and I navigated the relationship differently. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> or they're like, you know, I started having these intrusive thoughts creep up and negative self-talk and, you know, this is what I did instead because we talked about it or I heard this on your podcast, whatever the case may be. And that to me, that means so much. And not just because it's, 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 um, it's me saying it, but it means that what I say is intentional, right? What what comes from me is intentional. And the goal is to always improve upon somebody else's life when I say something. But to have people go out into the world and practice these things, and they are taking care of themselves. You know what I'm saying? They are taking care of themselves in those moments because I'm not around. You know, I always say whether it whether I'm training clients or whether I am coaching uh we only have a certain amount of time together. What you do outside that time is solely up to you, right? And even when it comes to giving advice and everything like that, I've gotten so careful about how I offer up advice and in a professional setting, but also in, in my personal relationships because I think people fail to realize how much energy goes into giving good advice, I'm not one of those type I'm not one of those people who wants everybody to come to me as the all knowing. Actually, I don't want that. <laughs> it makes me nervous. If you think that I'm the type of person that has all the answers, that is um that's a disservice to me because I'm still human having a uh, human experience and that is a responsibility that I didn't ask for. Right? There may be some people out there who love giving advice because they love one, hearing themselves talk. Maybe they do like helping people, but in process, it also helps them too. They're saying things out loud that they need to say out loud. Um, that's what this podcast was for me is like, you know, me technically helping myself saying things out loud initially. And if it happens to help somebody else, that's awesome, right? But it's just a conversation out loud. Uh, but my goal when it comes to giving advice is like, I want to make sure that what I say is intentional. I want to make sure what I say is not a bias, uh, a biased conversation where I'm like, you need to do this because this is what I would do. No, absolutely not. There are so many variables that go into offering up advice, like important advice, right? Because what I understand is someone is trusting me with their life choices. Someone essentially is trusting me with their life right? Anything I say to this person is going to impact them in one way or another. So I'm careful about that. That's energy. That requires energy on my part. That requires me thinking objectively. That requires me um, viewing things from multiple perspectives. That it requires me being sincere and authentic. It requires a lot of work to give good advice. So I'm careful about it, right? I forget how we got on this topic, but basically, you know, when, when clients tell me that they are applying things to their life and it's helping them, that means so much to me because these are people that I value and I respect and who also value and respect me. And now, even outside of this moment, 
the relationship of value and respect is still continuing. Why? Because they are using things that I said and communicated to apply. And I learn things from my clients too all the time, which is great, right? Um, I'd say last year was definitely a learning opportunity for me in terms of boundaries. And I think I talked about this. There's always something to learn with the people you're engaging with. Always, right? I learn boundaries. I learn what is important to me and what do I need in my professional um, exchanges with my clients, right? What level of communication is necessary to me? What, 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What, what um, terms and conditions are necessary, right? To function in a, in a healthy professional relationship between coach and client. Like all of these things I've learned and it's been a lot of trial and error, right? Um, cause again, when it comes to me helping people, I want to help people who are also wanting to help themselves. And if they are looking to help themselves in the best way possible, I know in process, they are going to be respectful of me too. Right. And it goes round and round. So I'm very selective about that. And like I said, last year was an opportunity for me to better the relationship with myself because like a Again, full circle, you know, sometimes when things happen or people are, are, are behaving in a certain way, we automatically personalize it as what am I doing wrong? And sometimes it's nothing. <laughs> sometimes you're not doing anything wrong. You can explore and still unpack and, and, and uh, evaluate what's happening, but things going wrong is not always necessarily a wrong in you. It just means that things are happening outside of your influence. People are going to be people outside of our influence, right? Right. And when you accept that, yes, you can have moments of frustration in terms of how people behave or communicate or don't, but that's still not you. One of the things I I always equip myself with is I ask myself the question of, did I do what I was supposed to do? Yes or no? What could I have done better? Was there anything? Yes or no? Okay, if yes, all right, cool. Deliver on that. Do do the thing that you think is necessary to um, make this a better experience for yourself, right? Do that. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Okay, after you do that thing, what happened? Any any changes? No? All right, cool. So that lets us know that this has nothing to do with you. This is this person operating in their own space from their own place of whatever, and it has nothing to do with you, vice versa. So regardless of how someone treats me, I'm still going to show up as Isaiah. The reason why is because... I still operate out of other people's influence for the most part, right? I'm still going to be me at the core and I will always adjust to my defaults, okay? And when you understand that dynamic too, you can stop operating in relationships that don't align with you, all right? People are where they belong right now in your life and I want you to think about that. People, wherever somebody is in your life in this moment is where they belong, and that means when it comes to friendships, if certain friendships have dissipated or some didn't even start, right? It felt like it was just always a, a misconnect or whatever the case may be, and it never really happened. People are where they belong, right? And if you have this relationship that's still in your life that's like hard or a point of contention for you and you're frustrated or whatever, they belong there. The reason why is because they're telling you something. What am I not communicating that needs to be communicated? What have I not changed that needs to be changed right now? Okay. What am I sitting on in the hopes that the other person changes? Okay. And even when you're thinking about people, oh, again, going back to missing somebody. Oh yeah. You know, they say if you're, if you're thinking about someone, that means they're thinking about you. All right. Even if that's true, what's being done about it? Have they reached out? Have they kind of aired their grievances? Have you guys had a a conversation of intention? Have there been apologies made? Have there been changes in behavior? No. All right, cool. So, all right, this person continues to miss me. I miss them. Does not mean that the relationship needs to be missed. You get me? Missing someone is just an acknowledgement and awareness that the relationship in itself has changed. Even if it's for a moment, the relationship in itself has changed. I miss this person. Why do I miss this person? Because they're not around me right now and I miss them. The relationship dynamic has changed for that moment. You get me? So again, going back to last year, everything that I was in control of, for the most part, I, I made I made an active choice to, to be 
very responsive, very attentive, and very aware. What can I do to make this a better situation for myself? What, what do I engage in? What do I disengage in? What patterns am I recognizing in myself and others? And again, as a coach, like it, it's all mental health stuff, right? So there are a lot of things I'm observant of in other people. And, you know, I know people talk about grace and everything like that. I am the type of person I, I, I'm careful about that word because I think it's overused. And like I said, I think it's a pass for poor behavior and it puts accountability on the person who's aware of that poor behavior and, and is subjected to it. So when it comes to the whole concept of grace, there are certain things I can understand and there are a lot of things I refuse to undergo because I still have work as a person to do. And being subjected to certain things is not going to allow that to happen. You get me? So, again, last year I revisited some relationships. And like I said, the thing that ended the relationship in the beginning was the thing that ended it later. It's so weird, but I kid you not. I'm I'm thinking about a couple of relationships right now. And literally the first time the relationship ended, it was the same thing. It ended up being the same thing all over again. <laughs> Within a couple months span, sometimes, there, you know, a, a revisit after a couple of years. But the same thing that ended it the first time is the same thing that happened again. Right. So when we talk about how people change. What does that look like? And somebody changing does not mean you have to wait around for that change to happen. It just means that this person at some time they may grow, they may not. You may grow, you may not, right? But it's a beautiful thing. And as you walk into this new year, keep your head up, keep your chin up, okay? Be aware of what you're responsible of. And even when things don't happen the way that you want to, or things just don't work out, chin up. Take a look at the full picture, And if you're working on self-love, ask yourself, what is loving about me blaming myself and ridiculing myself and beating myself up when I'm already in a, in a, in a dark place? How is that loving? Okay. How do I take care of myself in those small moments? How can I set realistic goals for the person that I am to be able to show up and accomplish those goals? What am I avoiding that needs to be addressed? Take into consideration all of these things, okay? And make the journey a little bit easier for yourself. Like I said with the podcast thing, I was like, I don't know how the hell I'm going to reach top anything. I don't know necessarily how that works. All I can do is keep producing my content, you know, and telling people to rate, review it, you know, support it because that helps spread. That's the stuff that I'm in control of, right? Whatever somebody does outside of that is not in my control. But I am in control of that. So accountability, discipline, consistency, advocacy, right? Accountability looks like, all right, cool. I'm going to make sure I keep producing episodes and making sure that what I talk about has some level of uh, potency that that somebody can listen and apply to their life. Um, Advocacy, you know, again, talking about this and and asking for help, right? Hey, you know, if you guys like what you listen to, rate and review this podcast, tell people what you like about it. And then other people have come back and told me, hey, I've been sharing your podcast with my family or this person or that. And I'm like, that's so amazing (laughs) to hear. And, you know, a lot of times it's people I don't even know and they're sharing my content. Self-advocacy, right? Consistency, making sure I continue to show up, right? Rest when necessary, because, you know, there have been times I may have missed a couple of episodes and I don't like missing my schedule. Like this is something that I look forward to in the days that I missed any time that I missed an episode wasn't because I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this. It was more of like, man, I need to breathe. (laughs) 
I really need to breathe because this is a lot, AKA advice, you know, talking about very important things that takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of work while still functioning in life. Right. So when I have a, a, uh, a stance in terms of like grace and everything like that and all that stuff, I'm saying it from a place of experience, right? I'm saying it from a place of knowing that as a human, the journey that I've gone through and not to say everybody's the same, everybody's different. But when we talk about giving grace, we expect, or there are a lot of people who preach that and they apply grace to every person you come across and ah, yeah, no, (laughs) not all the time. And grace does not mean reconcile. Grace also does not mean enabling. Grace also does not mean sustaining a relationship with the person who's very damaging and destructive. That's not what grace is. Grace means, hey, you may have been through some things. I see that. You know what? And I can understand from that level that there are certain things that you may have experienced that may have distorted your your image or your perception of how you're supposed to treat other people, whatever the case may be. I see that. Doesn't mean I have to continue to endure it though. (laughs) Those two are not mutually exclusive and that's amazing, right? When it comes to self-love. And I know people say like love is a choice. The reason I don't agree with that and even more so now, if, if love was a choice, first of all, that would be, to me, that sounds transactional. But also if love was a choice, we love ourselves a lot easier, wouldn't we? Right? Because people talk about how difficult it is to, to love yourself. Right? But love is a choice. Why can't you just choose to love yourself? No brainer. Right? And if love was truly a choice, don't you think we'd have less relationships we'd heal from? <laughs> right? Even when it comes to family members. Right? Oh, I choose to not love this person. That doesn't always happen because sometimes, you know, the people that have hurt you the most, you still love them. You care about them, even though they have shown you that they don't care about you in return. Now what? So love is not a choice. Love is a force. It's not force, right? But when it comes to loving people, it's not just about saying you love a person. It's how you treat them and how you show up. So if somebody loves you and they're not treating you lovingly, them quote unquote loving you is not enough, right? And truth be told, how they're treating you is not showing that they love you. So therefore, it's kind of not a valid statement. <laughs> and sometimes we are attached to people. It's not necessarily love in itself. There's an attachment there. And this applies to any relationship you have in your life, not just romantic partnerships. Just moving forward, full, dis- full disclaimer, anytime I talk about relationships, I'm talking about all people. Okay. I want you guys to to make it a point to set the tone. Do something different. Say something different to yourself, whatever that looks like. And let that carry you, you know, through this year. Pick a word. I picked my word already. As the year goes on, I'll I'll disclose it. But right now, I have it. (laughs) I think I have it. And uh, so far, it's working. And it's only the first day of the year. Because I started, it was crazy. The word itself came to me literally new year's eve which is kind of wild and then i just look back on what i've been working on last year and everything like that and i'm like all right this word makes sense for me this is it this is the word right and it's great so it's good to be with you guys this year i'm excited i think we got a lot in store got a lot planned and my goal is to make sure i hit all of it because there's time and, uh, you know, there's always an opportunity to, to value yourself and, and love yourself throughout that journey. So do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, if you like the podcast, you like what you're listening to, leave a rating or review. If you're on Spotify, if you're on Apple, click the five stars. Um, you could write a little description, let people know what you like. But this helps. This helps build the podcast, right? It gets it out there. It, it allows it to rank right? It moves it up the list of, of podcasts worth listening to. And it just helps guys. It helps. And the more this grows, the more I can do, truth be told, the more I can offer you guys. 
So it's it's like a hand wash in a hand, right? And if you want to sign up for coaching because you're looking to hit the ground running this year, the link is going to be in the description. Um, yeah, if you want to, you know, work with me, I'm down, right? If you're if you're willing to work, okay, and you're willing to do this work, and it's not always easy, but it is definitely beneficial. I got you back. All right. The link is going to be in the description of this podcast. And uh, yeah, hit me up. I'm now accepting new clients for the year. Um, And yeah, anybody who's looking to do the work and they're serious about it and you just need guidance and help and you need somebody to hold you accountable. You just want to do better. and You want to feel better. Let's do this. I'm always down for that. All right. I hope you guys are right. Okay, and if you're not, I hope you take an opportunity to make yourself feel better along the way. All right, take care of yourselves, yeah? Take care of each other and take flight.